out here. Cameron Rowan, one of the many players actually at 8-1 and one in the tournament playing Burn. Now this is a matchup that frequently is, goes in the favor of the Burn deck. Yeah, the Burn deck it presents a good amount of one mana interaction for the Infact deck, which is the way that you really beat this deck. Post sideboard, there'll be some path to exiles, though Blossoming Defense helps here. And we see Todd probing this hand. This hand is not going to be good at stopping a fast hand out of Todd. All right, Gitaxian Probe from Todd leads off the game. From Cameron Roland, we see two lands, a one drop in Monastery Swift Spear, and then four two mana spells. It's an Eidolon of the Great Revel, Lightning Helix, and a pair of Boros Charms. Eidolon is pretty good at dealing Todd a lot of damage, so it's going to depend exactly how fast Todd's clock here. Uh, we see Breeding Pool is the land for Todd. No one-mana creature. We'll see if he has an Ink Moth Nexus and over a Blighted Agent. For Cameron, Sacred Foundry into Monastery Swift Spear plucks in for a damage. So Todd down to 17 as we start the second turn. Ink Moth Nexus is a threat from Todd, but no creature. He plays it and passes. So nothing like a Blighted Agent just yet. And this is the kind of start where that Eidolon of the Great Rebel could really matter in a big way. Monastery Swift Spear swings in again. We're pausing here. Is Todd thinking about blocking? It sure looks like it. He knows that there's just a fistful of burn in Camera's hand, and he has to win quickly. The issue is, the play here is almost certainly Eidolon of the Great Rebel, and when you need to activate Ink Moth Nexus, that, that takes two of your lands away for casting spells. The only thing you're really able to do proactively is cast Mutagenic Growth. Well, taking four points of damage per Mutagenic Growth is not necessarily a winning line. Um, you have to be able to close very quickly here, and he's not sure he can do that with the threat he has available. So Todd says no blocks. He'll just take the one damage. Cameron not going to play a spell just yet, but then taps two for Eidolon of the Great Revel. Todd will dismember it, and an expensive dismember here. Four, man, four life points to cast it, and two more from the Eidolon. He'll yeah. go to 11. And realistically, you know, the Swift Spear was chipping in. Given the texture of his hand, of course, he had dismember. Looks like he has another Gitaxian probe in his hand. Uh, and the fact that the Inkmoth Nexus is so mana-hungry on offense, he had to use a Dismember on something, because it doesn't look like he can actually win the game before Cameron's able to just burn him out. Uh, so I like going for the Dismember there, though. I don't know if Todd's necessarily going to have what it takes to win this game from here. Yeah, just a third land. It's Windswept Heath, and then... And then he passes back, so a third turn where he pass passes here from Todd. Uh, players are confirming life totals. Yeah, Todd, we're going to correct that down to 10. Two hits from a Swift Spear, Gitaxian Probe, six from the Dismember. Checks out. Land three from Cameron Rowland. Uh, this is interesting on Todd's side that he hasn't played a creature. Now, I'd be worried on Cameron's side that Todd may untap. You know, he can crack a fetch land, untap, play a fourth land, and then 10 him with the Ink Moth Nexus. Mm -hmm. You know, the only interactive spell that we've seen in Cameron's hand is the Lightning Helix, which is rather clunky. No yeah. matter what, he has a turn two clock, a two turn clock here, assuming that the Swift Spear is able to connect. I think it's fair to assume that Todd is not able to block with Ink Moth Nexus and kill Cameron. Uh, it's possible, though. In fact, can do some really scary things if he has Blossoming Defense on blocks and then become immense on a uh, offense, though. Cameron can just cast a burn spell. Uh, you can aim the Lightning Helix in response to Blossoming Defense. There's not a ton that Todd's able to do there. And right. if he does do something, you're expending two pump spells from Todd. Right now, we're on Cameron's main face here. We, they know about the Boros Charm. If Cameron has drawn a Lightning Bolt, this is actually lethal this turn. Mm -hmm. The card he picked up looks like he has a Rift Bolt in his hand, which is... So close to Lightning Bolt, but not... Totally there. <laughs> in terms of mana efficiency, right there. In terms of how the card actually plays, not what he's looking for. And attack with Swift Spear. Todd's going to actually go for the block. He puts Ink Moth Nexus in front of the Monastery Swift Spear. Going to pay two life to Mutagenic Growth, the Ink Moth Nexus. This is a dangerous line. Todd is giving a lot of life points to Cameron. Mm -hmm. And Todd knows about the Lightning Helix, and he really just wants Cameron to point that at the Ink Moth Nexus right now. So that'll get rid of the Helix, it'll expend Camera's mana, and then he'll be able to use the Blossoming Defense in his hand to get around that. 
the, for Cameron, all you have to do, Lightning Helix up. You can actually use the Lightning Helix and then suspend the Rift Bolt, and on the following turn, Rift Bolt upstairs, Boros Charm. So and this is kind of. This is a free, free yeah, play. Yeah, so you're, you're just eating this. Uh, blossoming defense of Todd's. Which is so great play then by Cameron. Helix goes with the Inkmoth Nexus. Todd counters with Vines of Vastwood. So the Inkmoth is a 3-3. It eats Monastery Swift Spear. But as you mentioned here, Cameron going to post combat suspend a Rift Bolt. And both players know that Cameron's last card's Boros Charm. So mm -hmm. three from the Bolt, four from the Boros Charm. That is still lethal next turn. Yep. And so since Todd had that Vines, Leftovers, Arga, Taxium Probe, and Blossoming Defense. <laughs> That's a long <laughs> ways away from 10 poison. Even a Become Immense will not get him there. He has not dealt any Infect yet. I think we're going to be going to game two pretty quickly here. Yeah, Todd draws Glistener Elf for the turn. He's got a Cataxian Probe in hand. I, I'm not sure any card saves him here. Hmm. It would have to be some type of free cantripping pump spell. <laughs> in fact, not that good just yet. And a mana source. <laughs> a card that breaks every yeah, rule of sure. design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Todd at seven, facing down that lethal burn next turn. He'll cast Glistener Elf and pass. The idea from Todd here is maybe he points the Rift Bolt at the Elf. I don't think that we'll be seeing that happen. Upstairs. I mean, Cameron has land four, and he has two Boros Charms in hand. He'd... There's too much, you know, this is too easy from here. Yeah, Boros Charm upstairs. On to game two. Cameron Rowland takes the first one over Todd Anderson. And Cameron had the sort of hand that Todd could have won that game with his best hands. It was very light on interaction, but Todd's hand just was not aggressive enough to get there. And the Eidolon and the Great, Re Great Rebel put on just too much pressure for him to close there. So we're going to go over to the sideboard for Todd Anderson. A difficult game one. No Infect creature outside of the Ink Moth Nexus showing up. And he really... He was a ways away from racing. But we'll look at some of the things he has for the matchup. So three Nature's Claim, two Twisted Image, three Graft Digger's Cage, two Spell Pierce, two Spell Skite, a Viridian Corruptor, a Pithing Needle, and a Necropede, all available for Todd. The Spell Skites and the Spell Pierce are going to be the cards that he's looking at here. Spell Pierce I would put a premium on over Spell Skite just because there's a pretty real chance that Cameron's going to be casting some number of destructive revelry, which can really punish you for casting a Spell Skite. So mostly just the Spell Pierce to be able to get the interactive spells on the early turns and win a fast game. And over on Cameron, Roland's side. Got two Flames of the Blood Hand, two Smash to Smithereens, a Lightning Helix, a Searing Blood, three Path to Exile, two Wear Tear, one Deflecting Palm, and then three copies of Ensnaring Bridge. So basically what we're looking for here is just one for one removal. The Smash to Smithereens are totally reasonable, even if they just hit Ink Moth Nexus. And okay. if you think Todd has a Spell Skite, that's great too. Lightning Helix and is, is less good than Searing Blood. I, I think that Searing Blood is significant. Lightning Helix is a little slow. I would not prioritize getting the Helix in the deck. I would the Searing Blood. And the Path to Exiles are probably the best card on the sideboard here, just because you need this one-man interaction to deal with these infect threats and to fight through all these one-mana protection spells that Todd's going to have. His Vines, his Blossoming Defense, his Spell Pierce. Is he going to have enough time to do anything like Ensnaring Bridge? Uh, if he can get one down empty-handed, Todd might be left without an answer. So the thing about Ensnaring Bridge against Infect is everything's one power, so you have to run your hand out. If you're playing Burn, if you cast every spell in your hand, your opponent should be dead if you're doing your job. And the other thing is, sometimes Infect just gets you with Noble Hierarch if you bridge him. So yeah. I'm, I'm very not about this plan. Yeah, I guess when you look at the last game, Cameron actually ended the game with an extra Boros Charm in hand. Mm -hmm. So th the pacing here is pretty fast, especially if you have to take off turn three just to play one card. Right, and if you're loading up on Path to Exiles and just removal spells, what's left to be under the bridge? Fair enough. So players are going to get ready for the second game here. We're going to take a second to talk to you about the StarCityGames.com Creature Collection series. So this is... You've seen them at game night, and now you can get them on play mats and sleeves and in player bundles. So we have a couple of the new ones available that we want to talk about right now. We have the Hedgehog -a Hog. That's, of course, the parody of a Togga Tog. It's been our game night promo all month here in October. So you can actually still win it on play mats and pins for game night, but now available at the store uh, on, as so you see here, play mats and sleeves. We also have the Art of Ferrets. These are both illustrated by SCG's own Andrea Radek. Uh, this part of just the regular creature collection, not our game night pins, but equally adorable, perhaps more so. You see 
All the ferrets just in sweaters, hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> some pretty great stuff. So you can you can get the new, these ones now and see some of the other ones available. These are all at StarCityGames.com slash Creature Collection. So the color scheme here, reference to Alvin and the Chipmunks. I don't know what that necessarily has to do with favorite uh, with ferrets. They're similar animals, I, think I suppose. Ferrets, yeah, ferrets and chipmunks are. Would they get along? Get, I don't know that ferrets get along with much of anyone. Yeah. They but pretty much just get along with socks. Yeah, they do <laughs> are there. I know that Alvin and the Chipmunks, they, they're, maybe they, they're musical, right? Sure. They could be in a band together. <laughs> they're, they're musical ferrets, and that's why they appreciate the Chipmunks. They're like a knockoff band of Elvin and the Chipmunks in that art. <laughs> a cover band, if you would. Artie and the Ferrets. <laughs> Cameron's going to go ahead and take a mulligan here. Todd having kept on seven. And Burn is not a deck that mulligans particularly well. You're trying to combine just a threshold of cards to go upstairs. Infect is a deck that's going to tax you on actually using these burn spells on their creatures. So every card really matters. On the draw, six can be just fine. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else, six on the play, five on the draw, both are pretty dicey. Right. This is where those cards like actually killing something with Smash to Smithereens or Searing Blood is going to be very important for the burn deck. Misty Rainforest go from Todd. First play is going to be Cameron Rollins. It will be a mountain into Goblin Guide. Shows a Vines of Vastwood, and Todd goes to 18. All right, this uh, is all going outside of that mulligan. Things are looking very good for Cameron so far. Yeah, was interested to see if Todd would keep the Vines. He's going to go ahead and crack the fetch land before his turn, so he's not going to actually draw the card. Mm -hmm. Very likely he needs that blue source. In fact, really just getting that off of Breeding Pool, so it's almost never going to be worth it to fetch that untapped on his turn. Draws finds anyway after shuffling his deck. So. What, a, what a master. You go to a second turn. It looks like he has a, gl a Blighted Agent available and Ink Moth Nexus. So could put, put a couple threats here. Mm -hmm. Other cards in Todd's hand. Vines of Vastwood, Might of Old Crosa, Become Immense, and Land Number 3. So will be Ink Moth Nexus, Blighted Agent, two Infectors for Todd. We go back over to Cameron. This would be a great spot to have a Searing Blood or a Searing Blaze. Four Blaze in the main deck, the Searing Blood in the sideboard, putting up to five copies of that sort of effect. Bloodstain Meyer for Cameron, and he'll swing with Goblin Guide. Shows Rancor. I believe there is a Searing Blaze hanging out in Cameron's hand as well. So Todd down to 15. Yeah, if you pull the trigger on the Searing Blaze, Todd still has the Ink Moth Nexus, but it's... There's no way that's just going to kill you on the following turn. It would take all these mutagenic growths and another pump spell on top of it. It's because of that cost, mana cost, right? You have to activate Ink Moth Nexus, so that's really two of your lands. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you a lot smaller of, a, of resources to work with to cast your pump spells. Right, and if you're not pointing a removal spell at the Blighted Agent when Todd is tapped out, that's just going to get some chip shots in and make it a lot easier for the Ink Moth Nexus to clean up shop. And there is the Searing Blaze from Roland. So, Three to the agent, three to Todd. Todd going to activate Ink Moth Nexus, Might of Old Croset, and put five poison on the Cameron. Todd is not afraid of gut shot. Easy enough. We go back to Cameron. He's got Todd down to 12. Eidolon of the Great Revel, Boros Charm, Monastery Swift Spear. These are all available for Cameron. He will play Swift Spear, Swing Spear, and Goblin Guide. Mutagenic Growth, the top card. That's a great one for Todd. Yeah, it's good information for Cameron to know about it, but it's unclear how much he can even do. Uh, he's already up to five, in fact. He's in a pretty precarious situation here. A lot of pressure on Cameron to have multiple removal spells. So he swings, puts Todd down to nine, and passes. A land should do it for Todd. He draws the mutagenic growth. I believe he has two mutagenic growths, so he can just activate and make it a five with Vine's backup. That'd be mighty good. It's unlikely that Cameron has any answers. Todd would have to 
It would put him down to five to make the play, but that's actually a safe enough number against Burn. Right. Um, two lands, it would have to be Bolt Bolt, which would be messing up your Ink Moth Nexus anyway. At Rancors, the Ink Moth, Mutagenic Growths, it goes to seven. That looks to be lethal. And Todd here, you know, he's on Deflecting nine. Deflecting Palm from Cameron. And he has it, and that's the match. Oh, wow. That's yeah. straight out of the sideboard. And Cameron generating enough pressure that Todd just doesn't have the option to play around something like that. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say he's at nine. He can shove or he could just die on his next turn. That, that's really his only options. And, you know, a card one of in Cameron's sideboard wins him the match there. Wow. All right. Cameron rolling and burn. He is rolling on to a 9-1 record. <laughs> I see what you did. And, yeah, that's uh, just.